PepsiCo recently took delivery of the first production Tesla semis on December 1st, and according to Reuters, PepsiCo plans to have around 100 Tesla semis in their fleet in 2023. Stick around as I show how the Tesla Semi has the potential to save PepsiCo billions of dollars, and that's no exaggeration, in the coming years, and also why I believe that demand for the Tesla Semi will far outpace supply for some time. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. The Tesla Semi has some very obvious environmental benefits, but the truth is at the end of the day, if you are uh, being realistic, environmental benefits alone are not enough for many companies to replace their diesel fleets with Tesla Semi trucks or other electric Semi trucks. There must also be a financial incentive to make the switch, and this is definitely the case with a Tesla Semi as I'm about to demonstrate. Some of you might be wondering right now, how in the world am I going to be able to accurately calculate the operating cost of the Tesla Semi with a limited set of data? Well, thankfully, um, when Tesla unveiled the Semi back in 2017, they did share an operating cost comparison of the Tesla Semi versus a traditional diesel Semi. And as I'll talk about in just a few minutes, while a lot has changed since 2017 and costs have risen since then, um, I believe this is still a good model that we can use as a basis for our new calculations to bring them up to date to the end of 2022 as we move into 2023. So with that being said, I believe the numbers and the calculations that I'm going to do are going to be relatively close to the actual operating cost of the Tesla Semi because I believe I'm using good data. So moving to an operating cost comparison that Tesla shared back in 2017, you can see that in 2017, Tesla estimated for a 100 mile route with the details listed there to the right, which we'll talk about in a minute, a typical diesel truck would cost approximately $1.51 to operate per mile as compared to the Tesla Semi, which they estimated should cost around $1.26 per mile. Of course, this is back in 2017, and that represents a 25 cent per mile difference, which may not seem like a lot, but when you talk about a diesel semi or a typical semi which drives somewhere around a million miles in its life, saving 25 cents a mile actually becomes a significant cost savings. However, as I alluded to earlier, this data is really just a bit out of date because for Tesla's model here, they have diesel at $2.50 per gallon and they have electricity at seven cents per kilowatt hour. Now, I don't know if Tesla still plans on when they roll out their mega charger network. I don't know if they plan to have guaranteed electricity rates like they mentioned at the semi event, but nonetheless, right now a company like Pepsi they're charging the Tesla Semi at their own facility, so they're going to be paying electricity rates for their facilities, for instance, like the one in Modesto, California. I don't believe Pepsi is paying seven cents per kilowatt hour as they charge the Tesla Semi. So we need to update this model with a, a more accurate number for 2022, 2023. However, before I actually move to changing those numbers, I need to find out right now the spread of how much of this operating cost that Tesla calculated was for energy or fuel cost and how much of this cost per mile, this operating cost per mile was for other things like depreciation of the vehicle itself, um, maintenance and repair cost, etc. This will actually help us calculate a more up-to-date number here in 2022 as we move into 2023. For instance, according to my research, a typical diesel semi averages around 6.5 miles per gallon. So for a 100 mile trip with that kind of efficiency, you would use a little bit over 15 gallons of diesel. And if you multiply that by the cost that Tesla listed here, that would mean for their calculations, roughly $38.46 of this cost had to do with fuel costs. When it comes to translating this fuel cost to a cost per mile, you just simply divide that number by 100 and you get a cost a little bit over 38 cents per mile for fuel costs. 
And when it comes to a rough percentage, 38 cents is around 25% of $1.51. So we can basically estimate that for Tesla's calculations, somewhere around 25% of this cost was for fuel and 75% of this cost is for other. If you do that same calculation for the Tesla Semi using the 1.7 kilowatt hour per mile efficiency number that Elon revealed on Twitter and using that electricity cost that Tesla provided for their calculations, you can see that energy costs made up just a bit under 10% of the total operating costs for this 100 mile trip. So if we round up just a bit to make it a clean even number, we could say roughly that 10% of the total operating cost, the cost per mile of the Tesla Semi was for energy cost and 90% of it was for other, which once again likely includes things like depreciation of the vehicle, uh, maintenance, repairs, etc. So using these estimated percentages, if we look at the diesel semi, 75% of $1.51 equals an other cost of just a bit over $1.13. And for the Tesla semi, 90% of $1.26 equals also just a bit over $1.13. In order to stick with that 100 mile trip that Tesla mentioned earlier for our calculations, on this chart, I've multiplied that just a bit over $1.13 per mile of this uh, operating cost being the other category. And I've multiplied that by 100. And you can see that the actual other category for the Tesla Semi and the diesel Semi in this particular case is pretty much the same. There's just a small difference between the two. However, I believe we still have a problem with this number because a lot has gone up in price since 2017. And so I believe we need to adjust these amounts for inflation. So I went over to the United States Department of Labor website and used their inflation calculator to update these numbers. So as you can see, when adjusted for inflation, this number is just a bit under $137 instead of $113 and some change. Okay, now that I'm comfortable with the number that we have in the other category, let's move over to the energy category of how much does it cost to power each of these vehicles for 100 miles? Now, when it comes to this energy calculation, I think it's important that we do two different calculations here. The first one I'm going to do is going to be for California. And the second one I'm going to do is going to be for the US on average. The reason I'm starting with California first, and I believe this is a good number to start out with, is because according to this Reuters article that came out on December 16th, PepsiCo said it plans to deploy 15 trucks from Modesto and 21 from Sacramento. So California numbers are very relevant in this case, but uh, for the broader context, in just a minute, I'll move over to some national calculations. Nonetheless, according to the Energy Sage website, the average electricity rate in California is just a bit under 29 cents per kilowatt hour. And according to AAA's website, the cost of diesel in California is just a bit over $5.60 a gallon. So assuming 29 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity and $5.60 per gallon of diesel, you can see that in California, my estimates are about $1.86 per mile for the Tesla Semi and around $2.20 23 cents per mile from the average diesel semi. That represents roughly a 37 cent difference, meaning the Tesla Semi is about 37 cents per mile cheaper in California, according to my estimates to operate per mile. Okay, moving beyond California over to the rest of the United States and the US averages, according to AAA once again, the average cost of a gallon of diesel is somewhere a bit under $4.70 a gallon. And according to an article from the Save on Energy website, the average electric price for a business customer in the United States for electricity is 13.45 cents per kilowatt hour. So if we assume 14 cents per kilowatt hour and $4.70 per gallon of diesel, you can see that those calculations for a more national average come down to $1.61 per mile for the Tesla Semi or around $2.09 per mile for a typical diesel semi. So if we create a new chart, very similar to what Tesla created back in 2017, up to date for a national US average operating cost comparison for a 100 mile uh, trip here, you can see that the Tesla semi very possibly could cost 48 cents less per mile for this example. Now I'm about to take this savings and show how PepsiCo and other companies can potentially save billions of dollars by adding the Tesla semi to their fleets. However, before I do that, I wanna address something quickly. And this is something that I've seen a lot on the internet, a lot on, for instance, Twitter. But a lot of people are talking about the fact that, hey, if you have to replace the battery pack, won't that negate 
all the cost of the Tesla Semi. And I believe, based on what Tesla has provided, that Tesla has actually built in the cost of replacing the battery pack into this operating cost example that they gave, and here's why. Notice on the chart that the other category, which I once again mentioned, excludes energy costs and pretty much includes things like depreciation, maintenance, repairs, etc. You can see that this other cost is pretty much equal between the two semi trucks. Since an electric semi truck doesn't have a big diesel motor and there is a lot less maintenance involved, I believe with a Tesla semi, it makes less sense that these numbers should be equal unless there is a big cost added to this, like say the cost of replacing a battery pack. Now I do understand that the Tesla semi cost a bit more than the average diesel semi and maybe part of this cost is the depreciation cost difference. However, I don't believe that's actually going to make up much of a difference. For instance, a typical semi is expected to last somewhere around a million miles before its end of life. Some a little bit less, some a little bit more, but that's the basic average. And even though the Tesla semi does cost more than a diesel semi, back in 2017, the cost difference was probably somewhere around $50,000. So $50,000 difference divided by a million miles is only a five cents per mile um, added cost. So I don't think that's enough to make this other category for the Tesla Semi to be the same roughly as a diesel semi. I believe Tesla has, for instance, maybe potentially a battery cost replacement built into the Tesla Semi, maybe say for instance after 500,000 miles of use would be one example. And that would make, in my opinion, the other category make a lot more sense. I could be wrong on that and maybe I'm missing something, um, but I believe that makes sense. If you disagree with me, uh, let me know in the comments section below or if I've missed something there. With that being said, let's now move over to PepsiCo and talk about how the Tesla Semi, as they add more and more Tesla Semis to their fleet, it has the potential to save them billions of dollars in the future. As I mentioned earlier, according to this Reuters article, Pepsi plans to have 100 Tesla semis in their fleet in 2023. And for their Frito-Lay division, they plan to use, for instance, the Tesla semi for a 425 mile route. So once again, going with the average cost of a gallon of diesel in the United States and the average uh, commercial cost of electricity in the United States and those costs per mile numbers that we calculated just a minute ago, the national average cost for driving the Tesla Semi 425 miles, I believe, will be somewhere just a bit over $684 as compared to an average diesel Semi cost, which would likely be a bit over $888. So for that single 425 mile trip, that's a bit over a $200 savings with a Tesla Semi. But of course, that's just one small trip. I think it's important that we look at the much bigger picture for the entire lifetime of the Tesla Semi and the savings that could be recognized there. Now, when it comes to how long Pepsi keeps their trucks, once again, going back to this Reuters article, apparently they normally plan to drive a million miles with their trucks or seven years. So on a bigger scale, if you do that cost per mile for a 1 million mile lifetime cost, you can see that the Tesla Semi in its lifetime could very well save Pepsi around $480,000 according to my estimates. So at a basis, based on my calculations, we have a savings of around $480,000 per truck for the lifetime of a Tesla Semi versus a diesel Semi. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I believe that these costs per mile that we're talking about for the Tesla Semi and for a diesel Semi, I believe when Tesla calculated those, they included depreciation of the vehicle. Because in all reality, that would be the only way to really accurately calculate the true cost of driving a vehicle Per mile because that vehicle wears out. But just in case it does not, I'm going to go ahead and discount this savings amount based on what I believe the Tesla semi costs more than the diesel truck. So once again, I don't believe this is even necessary, but I want to make sure that these calculations are not too overly optimistic. And I'm actually probably going to be under the savings that Pepsi could actually realize. But nonetheless, back in 2017, the non-founders version of the 500 mile range Tesla Semi was supposed to cost around $180,000. However, due to rising material cost, I believe the Tesla Semi probably costs more like $250,000 in today's money. So let's just assume for a minute that the Tesla Semi does indeed cost $250,000 and that's what Pepsi paid for their Tesla Semis and will pay in 2023. And if a typical diesel Semi costs somewhere around $150,000, that means there's roughly $100,000 
cost difference there between the two, meaning the Tesla Semi could potentially cost $100,000 more than a typical diesel Semi. So if you take that $480,000 lifetime savings difference that we mentioned a minute ago and subtract that $100,000 cost difference, that gives you a savings of $380,000 for the lifetime of the Tesla Semi truck. However, right now, the United States is offering a huge incentive starting in 2023 for adding electric semi trucks to your fleet or electric heavy duty trucks to your fleet. And that amount equates to a $40,000 federal subsidy per vehicle. So if you add that on top of that $380,000, that gets you back up over $400,000 of savings. And keep in mind, this is not even including a $15.4 million state grant that Pepsi also received from the state of California. I'm not going to include that here because I don't know what, exactly what that covers. I believe it covers more than just the Tesla Semi, but adding other um, renewable energy trucks to their fleet. But nonetheless, just with that alone, a very conservative estimate, I believe, is that every Tesla Semi that Pepsi adds to their fleet has the potential to save them $400,000 in its lifetime over a typical diesel truck. So when it comes to how this looks, saving $400,000 for the lifetime of each vehicle, and you start calculating this out as PepsiCo replaces more and more of their fleet with Tesla semis, you can see that 100 Tesla semis has the potential to save PepsiCo around $40 million in their lifetime. 500 Tesla semis could save them somewhere around $200 million in its lifetime. 1,000 Tesla semis could save them somewhere around $400 million in its lifetime. And if they added 10,000 Tesla semis to their fleet, Fleet, that could save them somewhere around $4 billion. Of course, $4 billion is a lot of money. And if you can save $4 billion, why wouldn't you switch to the Tesla Semi? And so I believe PepsiCo is going to order way more than just the 100 semis that we know about right now. And um, PepsiCo, the PepsiCo company actually has a very large fleet. For instance, I pulled up the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration website and the Frito-Lay division of PepsiCo apparently has a fleet of over 15,000 vehicles. So I think in the future, PepsiCo having somewhere close to 10,000 Tesla semis in their fleet doesn't sound crazy. And Tesla does plan to mass produce the Tesla Semi because once again, going back to their Q3 2022 conference call, Elon Musk mentioned aiming for 50,000 units in 2024. Okay, so $4 billion of savings, that's huge. But this actually has the potential to get even better for a company like PepsiCo with the addition of renewable energies and solar to their facilities. For instance, according to this design news article from back in 2010, the Frito-Lay facility in Modesto had a one megawatt solar installation, which represented somewhere around 25% of their electricity use. And moving forward here to the end of 2022, PepsiCo actually has an emphasis on installing solar and renewable energy sources on their facilities because on their corporate website, they mention, quote, progress towards our goal is being achieved in part by building new wind and solar installation at our plants and distribution centers coordinated by local and sector teams. So as PepsiCo adds more and more solar to their facilities, this has the potential to even lower the cost per mile further that we talked about because if they're paying less for electricity and they're getting a greater percentage from the sun, of course, there is the depreciation cost of the solar panels themselves, but those panels will pay for themselves. And eventually they could be powering the Tesla Semi on solar power alone, and that eventually could eliminate that energy cost altogether. This is an incredible potential that Pepsi has with the Tesla Semi. And I believe other companies also are going to take notice and already have taken notice of the savings that they could potentially have with the Tesla Semi. I fully expect that Tesla will be able to sell every Semi that they can build for quite some time because they clearly have the best electric Semi on the market right now. And when you add in the cost savings, it seems to make switching to the Tesla Semi a no brainer. Please let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also, thank you to my Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.